that this this idea, um, uh, Brian, of, of like again diving into the the feedback and assessment side of things. But what happens post feedback and how do we close that loop? One of the things that that um, you mentioned when we were chatting was was the insight in terms of that um, emotional um, uh, sense from the students and, and being able to get a feel for the mood of the class. So I suppose, again, this is as, as we roll out Nurture with yourselves, it, it's looking at some of those things that, that caught your eye as well. So bringing that into feedback and closing the loop, um, any, any kind of uh, things that jumped out to you most uh, when, when getting on board? Yeah, again, that ability to check, you know, have students put the feedback into action because again if, if you're constantly marking work and, and giving feedback and whatever i mean how long do you you have to go back is it probably it's more than 20 years since you had black and william and their their study about feedback and the effectiveness of you know comment only marking compared to grade, grade only marking and everything else and look we've all probably had those conversations in our schools but the last part of it and it comes back to the students seeing themselves as a learner and the purpose of being in school at all and getting them into that, letting them in on the secret like of what's mm. happening in the school. Like the teacher plans a lesson, delivers it, you know, there's an assessment to see how and, and that, that guides the teacher as well as guiding. It's not just here, look, you're you're good at this or you're not good at this. It's it's about, you know, and going back then, where how do you move that on then uh, from there? So right, you got 60%, you'd like to get 80%. How do you do that? Or whatever, yeah. and look, you know, I'm back into percentages as well. But right, you ha you have a, a mediocre understanding of it. How do you get a better understanding of it? Mm. And part of that as well has to be that student confidence. And sometimes students will feel very underconfident in a thing, but they'll actually be quite good at it. And sometimes, uh, you know, they'll feel very confident, and maybe they won't be as prolific as they think that they mm -hmm. are. Um, and that measurement, and it was the thing that really did stand out for me when we looked at, at Jump Grade as it was, or Nurture Now, um, you know, that student confidence. So if students have high confidence, but actually the attainment is low on it, uh, there's something to miss there, you mm. know, or, or if they have low confidence, you know, maybe we need to work, but they're doing quite well, we need to work on that. Um, and then if it's a pattern, you see, and we, we're not in it long enough to know, but if you see patterns of low confidence, but high attainment, mm. um, Maybe they're just being modest, uh, you know, maybe maybe there's another issue there where you need to look at. But I suppose that had to drive decision making really as well. Um, that that is not just a hunch or a gut feeling um, that they were kind of able to say, well, X number of students are outperforming how they, how they feel uh, they should be performing. And uh, why is that? Is there an issue with their confidence? So on? and then you can start to drill into things. And again, you know, every iteration and every time you go around, things come up a little bit, a little bit more uh, every time. Super, super. Um, Brian, what I'm going to do now is, is give folks uh, a quick view of, of the, the nurture functionality within Teams. But uh, thanks a million for that. It's really helpful. I think um, it, it really is a massive help for uh, other school leaders to be able to hear from a perspective like yourself. So um, uh, thanks a million for that. Um, folks, what I'm quickly going to do, I know we had to, to um, uh, go back over a few bits at the start, so we might be a, a small bit behind, but I'm just going to very quickly um, show you some of the, the things we're working towards here. And, and what you're looking at on screen is actually the the type of feedback we want to enable teachers to provide and uh, the structure behind this. Um, Stephen will quickly go through um, the, the thought process and the, the research frameworks that sit behind enabling teachers to produce this kind of feedback. But again, what you enable is that personalized comment, a grade if it's a grade assignment, but being able to break down a class by learning objectives in terms of how did you do, how is your process, your next steps, and in additional, material, additional supporting material that may become part of that as well. So that's just going to give us a snapshot of what we're working towards. And what I'm going to do now is actually share my screen and show you this functionality living within the Microsoft Teams environment. So one of the big things just in terms of, of um, uh, let's say, going from our very earliest um, school adopters to what we have now um, is looking at the, the different ways of making it seamless and easy for teachers to get started and up and running. So one of the very big developments we've had since we start, since um, last year is the, the change in terms of our um, the ability for teachers to be able to, to use the um, Microsoft Teams uh, within, without leave, having to leave the Teams environment. So one of the things I'm just going to show here is in a sample class is the, how easy it is to get Nurture set up for a teacher. So uh, if they go into a class that they're an owner of, um, they can simply click on the plus icon to add a tab. From there, then you'll see the My Assignments tab, um, which we'll have set up in advance um, for any school that works with us. Um, they'll be able to add that functionality to their classroom, and from there, all of the frameworks, all of the way that that um, it works is available for the teacher to use um, with a few clicks of a button. So really just kind of simplifying that whole process, uh, creating a new assignment uh, is all done from within the Microsoft Teams environment. The, te the students then get their assignments um, using the nurture functionality from within Teams as well. So um, really kind of straightforward in terms of, of, of that flow. 
Um, one thing that I'm just going to touch on now, and, and I won't go into detail here, it's more just to show kind of the, the key bits of, of um, uh, the aspects of the, of the platform and the value it brings is looking at how we, we embed that framework and that research into how the teacher is providing assignments. So from assignment name description, um, the different ways they can attach the files from voice notes um, to files from their device and the grading, there's a number of different options in terms of whether it's marks, percentages or grade descriptors. Um, and but the, the, I suppose where the framework starts to come to life is with the learning objectives where a teacher can now break down the class and those common themes or common um, areas that students often fall down on, being able to use different learning objectives to, to represent that and group students by common themes, which is really where the time saving kicks in. But the bit I really want to focus on, and we're not going to go into detail now, we can follow up with, with a more in-depth um, demonstration afterwards, I'm just conscious of time here today, but the student reflection is a really key part of how we close that feedback loop. So this is the last thing I want to show before I, I um, kind of just give, give a pass over to Stephen to, to talk about the CPD program. But just look at some of the aspects that we can bring in here to close that feedback loop after a student receives their feedback. So first of all, when they submit their work, they have, they have to tell us how confident they are in their answers, which is hugely important in terms of identifying that effective feedback. And then also we have the ways that the teacher can look at ref the student reflection post um, setting it out. So what you have here now is you can uh, ask the student, are they disappointed, neutral or happy in their um, uh, with the feedback they receive? But an even more detailed one and one we're really excited about is the three to one response where a student is asked to tell us three things they've learned, two things they found interesting, and one question they're still left with. So what we're doing is we're creating a process where we're taking the work and thought of the teacher, we're bringing in that pedagogical framework into how the teacher is interacting from an assessment perspective with the students. Um, so I'm going to just stop sharing. That was a kind of a quick teaser of, of um, some of the functionality there. And I'm just going to jump back to, to some of the last steps within this as well, is how this feeds into reporting as well. Because I think it's really important to look at the longer picture of, of where does this go for uh, exactly like um, Brian mentioned, it is um, how this informs um, you as a school leader in terms of having the data to make decisions as well. So looking at this, for example, now imagine over time that you have, because the students were, were collecting not just the grade at the point of the assignment, but also their confidence levels along the way and plotting those against each other over time. What we're also doing is we're starting to build an engagement score because of the multiple different touch points we have along the way for each student. Think of now whether it's school reports, parent teacher meetings, that you can go into the, the level of granularity, same as for the teacher, and see that this student in the topic of math, here's how they feel, confidence versus grades, engagement versus others in the class. You're really informed as all as a byproduct of the work you're doing on the assessment side. So it's not asking for any additional work on the teacher side from there as well. And that leads then into the school level. So what you can see now from a school perspective, if you want to look at all math students of a certain year, this is now informing school leadership, it's year heads, being able to get that better picture of overall how we're faring. So the STEM subjects versus non-STEM subjects and comparing others in terms of engagement or conf confidence levels. This is the kind of level of detail or, or insights that you can get that will automatically be generated from the teachers using this over time. So as we build towards not just the, the um, small group of teachers, but that full school adoption, this is where we're working towards. And that idea that you'll be able to have really insightful um, uh, views for your own class and your own schools and uh, that you wouldn't have had beforehand.